you have such a unique background, not just racing, but also uh, the stuntman career. Uh, I, I know your your father was involved, you know, back in the back in the back in the older days. But when it came to you getting involved in that, was that really straight through him? I mean, what was that process like of wanting to pursue that when you were younger? Um, I, I raced motocross and ski race when I was younger, and I always wanted to race cars, but uh, it, it was never something I thought I'd ever do until I got old enough to race. I was like, oh, I'm going to try jumping in a car. So uh, my dad was definitely influential um, being around racing with his you know, rock car and um, then get, getting involved in NASCAR and the friends he made. And I just started working hard. Uh, I spent a few months with Richard Childress and mm-hmm. uh, painted cars, cleaned the shop, spotted for Dell. Uh, nice. I kind of got to learn a little bit. I was very mechanical anyways, working on motorcycles and building engines and set up and stuff. So I enjoyed the mechanic part of it. Uh, Earnhardt said, if you want to be a good driver, you need to learn how to work on the cars and know set up. And so mm-hmm. I took that to heart and really started working in race shops and building cars and kind yeah. of learning, learning the process. So I worked really, really hard to get in the sport um, and, you know, worked on sponsoring wrote yeah. letters thousands of letters back then it wasn't is uh it was a lot harder to access information back then than it is now so you know made really good proposals got some help from marketing guys from companies that felt bad for me probably it's like mm-hmm. hey here's, this is what proposals look like so yeah. you know I, I paid my dues for sure and um you know paul newman helped a little bit and some friends companies i got interstate batteries to sponsor me in my first uh, race at daytona and that, that kind of got them into the sport yeah. um so yeah, it was a lot of hard work for sure, um, and a combination of relationships and you know the introduction to the sport with my dad was definitely you know helped a, a lot to just get to know people. Mm-hmm. Was he really your introduction into a film career as well? Yeah, I mean his background is you know yeah. stunt stuntman and director and coordinator, so uh, I grew I grew up around film more than I did racing. You know I didn't mm-hmm. get involved in racing until I was you know sixteen seventeen. And my dad started racing when I was like 12 or 13. Right. So uh, younger, we always grew up around movie sets and, you know, Paul Newman coming over and uh, John Wayne and all these people to the house, Burt Reynolds and stuff like that. So that that was kind of my world in the ski industry. And, uh, so, you know, like I said, when I, when I got old enough to drive, I went to driving, but I still did, you know, I've done 300 movies and stuff. So, and, uh, you know, oh, my yeah. dad, He's one of the best guys in the business, and Hal Needham and Mickey Gilbert, and they, they're the ones kind of taught me everything I knew and got me into, into that industry. Yeah, Paul Newman seems like the perfect guy because he, he also has you know both sides of the string. When it came to meeting him and, and getting yourself in the door to be a part of films, I mean, did he did he have, was he kind of like a mentor, you would call him? I mean, he's always been a great example, a mentor in, in a lot of ways, more as a, a, as a friend, um, mm-hmm. but just his example and how he treated people and the effort he put into things and dedication and he's always been a, an amazing man what he does for people and charity wise so uh, and, and as far as racing you know he, he's always been helpful and um, sponsored sponsored some when I really needed it uh, mm-hmm. for an engine or something or you know whatever he, he saw how hard I worked and um, he did He's just a great guy. I mean, he mm-hmm. had the best IndyCar team for a long time, and yeah. the way he ran his business and treated people were something to definitely uh, learn from. Yeah, when it came to starting out with, uh, you know, late 80s, early 90s, I believe, uh, Tail on Highway 91 was one of the first films that you were a part of. What stunts did really suited you, at least early on, and, and how has that really evolved over the years? Well, my brother and I, I mean, we grew up doing everything, so we were riding bikes and motorcycles and skiing and mountain biking and snowmobiles and everything so mm-hmm. you know we were at a professional level at a lot of sports so just anything that was crazy we <laughs> like yeah. but you know more uh you know a motorcycle is a skill that takes a long time to develop at that level but also it's not just developing a skill for um driving a car or riding a motorcycle right. bike it's understanding film and what the camera sees and mm-hmm. like, there's so many other elements that a good stuntman will bring to the table besides a talent to be able yeah. to do to do the actual action so um, I think that's something that my dad and Hal Needham really and Mick Gilbert really resonated with us always watching behind the lens understanding what the lens sees understanding what the scene is before and after so you can 
make it look good before and after for edit and mm -hmm. the approach what do you see what's important in this shot you know it's only this moment and concentrating on this moment don't worry about anything here and here as far as the lead up because you might do something totally not right yeah. in a normal situation to achieve what you need to in just this moment and mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things to the to the stunt stuff that really interesting that I learned you know from from my dad and those guys um, but then just developing skills rock climbing and everything else that I did do as a kid yeah. so really beneficial going into that stuff how do you manage what's written in story and what you have to execute and how do you alter it if needed but how do you make it look good so we, we're very active especially when, when I'm coordinating or second and directing but even as a stuntman you work really closely with your directors and coordinators and your actors to do to do things you know um, and that's that's kind of a fascinating part you're throwing so many variables all the time there's so many factors to how to do these things to make it work well and experience and, and understanding that is super vital I mean, there's, there's guys that are really good at it and then there's some guys just, they just don't know or don't have that skill set to understand it so um, you're, you're very active in making that scene work especially the really complex one there's a lot of um, organization and choreographing and planning and understanding and so it, it's it's pretty fun everything you just go do something crazy but no it's it's very well thought out and we do do crazy things that are um, very very risky but uh, a lot goes into what we do yeah have you ever been injured oh yeah yeah <laughs> is it common um, well, just from my sports background, motocross and skiing and, you know, stunts and stuff, I'm just very active, so. Yeah. Does it happen very, often, like, during movies? Like, during uh, some stunts? Guys get hurt. I mean, yeah. yeah. You try to prevent that, and we've all gotten hurt if you're doing big stunts. Mm -hmm. Some guys say, oh, I've never been hurt, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but I probably haven't done a very big stunt sure, then, because yeah. <laughs> it happens to, to the best of them. Um, you know, it's just part of it. Yeah. You, know, you get beat up a lot. It does, you know, but... I don't mind getting getting a little beat up. Right, it makes you feel alive. So, yeah. and you got you got to be willing to to do something that's gonna hurt. You don't know how bad, but you got to put that out of your mind. Otherwise, you don't do it right, and you risk yourself getting more hurt, and it doesn't look good either. So, yeah, I'd rather get uh, beat up and take some chances. There's some. There's a few times that some of the stunts are pretty big where you mess up. You're dead. This is yeah. the way it is. So you got to believe in what you're doing. Understand what you're doing. And don't put yourself in a position that you can't do what the task is. Yeah. So. And I ran through your IMDb page. I saw a bunch of movies that were personal favorites of mine. Um, but you mentioned that you do work closely with the actors. Mm -hmm. um, are there times where it's really you two guys trying to learn the character together? I mean, how often is the actor right there with you? That you the actor's there a lot, but you're only working with them to figure out, you know, helping them do part of a scene that might transition into yours or it's just their scene that you're teaching them how to fight or do things or drive a car or whatever you know like uh, Donnie Wahlberg and um, in Blue Bloods we I worked with him driving so he could be shot doing the scene a portion of it so it really felt organic and, and like him so or you're doing fight stuff or whatever it is. You're there a lot to keep your actor safe too in his environment or whatever elements that are going on that have action related. And then you're also there to jump in and you need to watch your actor, see how they move, see what the scene played out. So you can repeat that in the way he did it and, and work together. And, and you, want, you want them to look really good. So you're always giving them tips. I, I do when, I, when I'm close to my actor, I'm like, hey, this would be better to do this. or not so much on a character wise or acting wise occasionally because you know, they, they have their mind full of their own stuff mm -hmm. so if you can bring since I'm a director I, I like you know, bring that to light but um, uh, it's more about movement storyline what works how, how to make them work in a scene when it relates to action and how I can replicate that so people it's a seamless process they can't tell it's me or my actor yeah um, that's really important. You see his moves, you see what he did in the scene before and how he transitioned and things like that. So it's a lot of paying attention. Yeah. I'm not going to say starch talk, but are there ever any actors that you're able to work with where you go, well, it's, you know, it's great to great to have this on my resume. It's great to meet this person and be a part of one of their works. I mean, I just enjoy real professional actors and directors, producers. So um, there's a lot of really great ones out there. Um, unfortunately, I 
I kind of grew up around the largest, biggest actors in the world, yeah. so it was never starstruck. It's just a respect for what they do and who they are, but uh, more and more how they treat people and how they approach their their film. You know, unfortunately, worked with almost everybody um, in all those films, but there's some really good good guys out there that are really dedicated and and bring an A game to their effort, and that's why they're really successful and their films are successful. So. Um, just overall, it's not just the actors; it's a it's a whole crew, you know. And it's just, it's fun to be around really good crew because it's like a race team. They're finely tuned. They're the best at what they do, and they can solve whatever and keep productions going on time and schedule. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, I was going to run down through a few movies, and not obviously you've done so many, but I wanted to see you know what you remember from some of these films. Uh, one of them was Jumanji in 1995. Uh, Robin Williams was in that movie. Yeah. Um, yeah do you remember what what you did? Uh, that was a while ago. I don't. Yeah. I did some driving stuff and running. It was, I think my dad, my dad and I were up on that. Um, I think a good bit of it was driving stuff and running in streets and yeah. things like that. It was nothing too crazy. A lot of that, you know, just digital effects. So you're mimicking or seeing something. That, but uh, I think I've only worked on that a couple of weeks. But that was a fun one. Yeah, a uh, black sheet with uh, Chris yeah. Farley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, I doubled that guy with the curly hair. We did some driving and fight stuff yeah. in that David one, Steve too. was another one. I'll be at Kobe Heaven. No, I don't, I don't even remember everybody, but I doubled the guy with the, no, wait, what was his Nutty name? Professor? Oh, Nutty Professor was yeah. the one with the curly okay, hair. And then too, yeah. The other guy was, um, Vince, Vince Valoof, I think, and Black Sheep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We did driving stuff in that one as well. Mm-hmm. You in a couple of Jurassic Parks as well. Um, mm-hmm. Probably some two two of the bigger bigger films. You know, what what would you really uh, doing for those those two? Uh, the second one, I did some driving stuff. Bus crash through a wall. I was on the other side. I had to jump out, mm-hmm. running down the street. And three, I doubled a William Macy in the whole one. So we did all kinds of anything he was in was there so that, that film was nine months and it was a lot of fun it was fun to work with Spielberg and um, Winston and all those guys that created those animals and yeah. did everything it was pretty pretty that was one of the more memorable films we did a lot of cool stuff on that as well yeah you talk about giant I mean Steven Spielberg he's arguably the giant when it comes to animated I mean it comes to films the last 20 25 years do you, what memories do you have of working with him uh, you know, he wasn't on set too much on three because he wasn't directing. Yeah. Joe Johnson, I believe, was directing, but we saw him a good bit. I mean, he's he's a true pro. <laughs> yeah, and he's very creative and professional, and um, you know that that was one that stands out. That was really fun because those are iconic individuals. You know, with um, animatronics, and you know that that was one of the last. Well, I think it was the last one that they really used animatronic animals mm-hmm. um, for majority of the film. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to see that stuff. And then it went into digital. So um, yeah, yeah. Spider Man was another one in two thousand two. Is that mostly yeah. driving, driving base? I know it's. No, nah, we issues. did a lot because we, uh, you know, a lot of rigging and wire work, and you know, double James Franco and that. So there was uh, two and three. I did, yeah. I think. Um, so there was a scene on the balcony and it had fallen away and fire stuff and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, we did some other things that was a while ago and then three it was a lot of rigging and testing stuff for James to do hanging and getting flung around by Dr. Octopus mm-hmm. and uh, rigging other stunts for other people and things like that mm-hmm. so that was, a, that was a pretty fun one. You also did uh, 127 hours mm-hmm. uh, for James. Was he was he also part of that? Did you really get to meet him too much, or was he one? Of I those? mean, we worked very close every day. Did you? Um, yeah, he's a good friend and he's a great actor. So on that, we did actually did a lot of action stuff. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I went from Green Hornet, and uh, James said, "Hey, I want you to look meet the um, you know, director." Um, come do this film for me and I'm like okay well what is it and so he sent me the script and I read it. I'm like okay there's only one guy falling in a canyon then he repels down then he rides a bike yeah and the movie's six months I'm gonna be losing a lot of money because I'm not doing anything and I'm yeah. gonna be sitting around which is driving crazy ended up going there and then uh the director had such a vision 
for the film that we just I was so busy <laughs> it was really fun I mean we were doing 300 foot descenders and I and then when I met with the director he's like yeah we got a bike guy he's a pro in the area we're gonna use him I'm like well okay you eliminate one thing I do really well I was a professional right. bike rider and and then but so I got there and he didn't want to do some of the stuff and jump so I ended up doing all the, wow. <laughs> the bike stuff yeah. so I like did that and then we uh did a bunch of I mean so many things water stuff and up until his arm gets stuck I guess and, yeah. Yeah. yeah but then he had all his dream sequence stuff the last yeah. stuff we shot didn't make the movie too so, um, but I, I really wanted to work with that director um, mm -hmm. he did Slumdog Millionaire and uh, he's done a lot of other great movies since then he's a really great guy so you know we always try to take care of your key actors that you have good relationships with and, yeah and uh, so that was a really fun one yeah, I was going to ask what, how you maintain relationships with actors throughout. I'm assuming most of them end up going on and doing doing other things, and you kind of get separated. But which ones do you really consistently have relationships with? It depends. You know, you get everybody gets on so many films. Some guys stay with one actor all the time, and they do enough films back to back to back for action stuff. But then you have sometimes where you're you're on a film for several films for an actor, and then you get busy on other stuff. You can't double them. Mm -hmm. You can't get away. So then they get somebody else or whatever. So um, it varies, um, not too consistent because I'm jumping from film to film a lot. Yeah. And my heyday of my career was every day. You know, you're on a, on a movie, so um, you're not always available to, to you know a film might overlap or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I got really busy. I couldn't even work with my dad when he had a show. I'm like, damn, yeah. I'm busy on other shows, yeah. but I, I, I can't go. So um, you know, so, so like I said, some guys double the same guy all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, from one film to the next but for me it's a variation of all kinds of different actors I'd say I've doubled James probably more than anybody mm -hmm. like consistently we have a really good uh, look for, for each other and yeah. wardrobe and stuff so uh, the first film I worked with him on was a uh, uh, James Dean story mm -hmm. that's where we met so yeah you did this at the end mm -hmm. you, I didn't work on that one oh yeah well I don't think no. I thought I saw it on your IMDb. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. I forget. They just run together. <laughs> I forget. Yeah. So, There's a few maybe more. I did. Yeah. A few more questions. But yeah, one of them was how you manage. I mean, I look at this and it's just multiple films every single season and every single year. How you really manage that? How all these um, offers, I guess, come in on which ones you're available for, which ones you're interested in? Yeah, it's hard to juggle. I mean, you just take what comes. Yeah. So people call you and hire you and if you miss other days you'd turn it down and just the way it goes so mm -hmm. and then when I was racing full full time there was you know three four years I didn't work on a film so I was too busy racing both cup and the Xfinity and with appearances and everything else just yeah. didn't allow like a day to even get away so mm -hmm. um, I've done a lot a lot of films with having to turn a lot down because of racing and also the time frame that I didn't race at all but mm -hmm. Part of it, I, I yeah. don't know. It's it was definitely a juggle game, and I was really trying to race and do racing, and that was a career as well. And mm -hmm. combined, you know, that's how I made my living. And then, you know, um, so he was like, oh, I can't do that movie shoot. I have a race, but <laughs> yeah. you know, of course, you really want to race. You have a contract to race, but right, right. Um, is it easier now? I guess since you're racing once. Yeah, I mean, I'm only racing occasionally, so it focuses yeah. business and in, in film. Mm -hmm. um, not, uh, you know, film industry is very, a very tough industry too. You go away a little bit, people forget about you, and mm -hmm. uh, you got to get back in the game. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I have the experience and skill sets that uh, that are unique in some regards. So it keeps keeps me busy and you know, keeps certain people uh, hiring me. Yeah. Yeah, two more films I wanted to ask you about. One was uh, Eight Mile with uh, Marshall Mathers, um, obviously a legend in, in his field, but he did that movie. And, um, you know, what, what was your level of involvement with him and what you did there? I got called. I don't know what. I think he had a stunt double. He had to go because of the holidays. I got called in. It was over Christmas and New Year's. I, they needed a film to get it done because of his schedule. So normally you don't work at Christmas and New Year's. And I said, okay, I'll go up. So I doubled him doing a fight thing. I just mainly helped him with his whole fight scene in the studio and we did some other stuff in the streets I don't, I don't remember but I remember it was really cold <laughs> and he's a, he's a really good guy he's super super nice a little gentleman to, it was nice to meet him and uh, work with him 
do you feel connected to these guys you know when they go on and do um, whatever they do in their career do you feel like some kind of con every time I meet somebody and they end up doing something great I, I it just means more to me I don't know but do, do yeah of course I mean when you meet great people you always appreciate who they are as an individual thing you didn't you know you only have perception of who people are persona mm -hmm. and when you get to meet somebody and work with them face to face you really get an understanding of who they are and um, some people are really surprisingly uh, you know different than you ever really expected and of course I always wish good things for people anyways but um, yeah it's, it's fun I mean you develop friendships and some of them are kind of weird because it's only people you see on movies and that's the only yeah. time you talk but it's such a fan it's like here you don't really often talk to the people outside of when you're at the track but you're at the track so much so you always run into somebody every five to seven years that you've worked with before you're always you know and that's kind of your family when you're around so you're, you're on set all the time so same with actors you're like hey what's going on I haven't seen you in 15 years yeah, yeah. <laughs> they remember you yeah you know, usually remember each other yeah yeah, and the last one was uh, the master in 2012, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, you were his uh, stunt double. Um, in just my personal opinion, he's one of the, the greatest actors of, of our certain time. I think he's uh, doing the, the Joker as well, mm -hmm. you know, this year. So uh, working on that film, Philip Seymour Hoffman as well was part of it. Uh, what was your level of involvement there? I did a motorcycle riding scene and uh, yeah. some old bikes, and then I played a little part on the ship somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was about it. We spent three or four days out in the desert riding bikes mm -hmm. doing a scene that they were out there. So, um, I don't even think I saw that movie. I usually don't see very many of the movies I've yeah. been in. I think, uh, what, Captain Marvel's out now. I haven't seen mm -hmm. that. And uh, I'm looking forward to John Wick, though. Mm -hmm. That's coming out soon. We did a you lot of stuff in that. Not too long ago, you wrapped that up, right? Uh, no, we been. That was in June, July, I think. Okay. Um, so... August, I don't remember, so sometime last year, so, mm -hmm. I'm in a lot of the trailer, though, so it's kind of fun, and we yeah. did some, another friend of mine that I work with a lot, uh, Joe Dryden, we do a bunch of bike riding and that thing, mm -hmm. we're the lead guys in, in two of the main scenes with the motorcycles, so, mm -hmm. uh, another one where John grabs me off the bike to the ground, that was a pretty great crash, and then, uh, we did some car stuff, too, mm -hmm. right? it, car hits with guys and yeah. whatnot. So that, that was a really fun, good crew, guys I've worked with for some time. Yeah. And final question, um, when you go to see movies, you said there's some that you're excited for, some that maybe you haven't seen yet. I mean, are you really, is it really still that drive where you're really excited to see the final product and how it turned out for you? You know, I, I never really think about it. There's some movies I've wanted to see just to see how the, it, it ended up, but like I said, I probably watched 20% of the movies I've been in, so it's yeah. not really, a, I, I try to go see them, but, you know, it doesn't always allow me the, the opportunity to be able to, to get to the theater, so much, yeah. yeah, and I, you know, I'm, I'm working, I'm pretty busy, so, um, I spend my time working in the day and working at night, usually on my computer and taking mm -hmm. care of business stuff, so, if I get with my family or friends or if I have a date or something, it's always fun to go to the theaters and 